my crafty friends. This is Joanne. How are you today? I am coming to you today with a quick tutorial about how to make these fabric bows. I was speaking with a friend of mine and she was saying that she had a difficult time putting them together and I said, oh really? I find it very easy. So I am going to do a little tutorial about how I do it. And these are the fabric bows that come from the Hip Kit Club. This is their new one from the November 2021 Christmas kit. And it comes with all of these. And you can mix and match all the colors together however you want to. I tend to put together the ones that are supposed to be together in the same um, pattern. It's just how I am, but you can mix and match these up and make any colors that you want. Now, the Hip Kit Club did originate these bows, and you will see a lot of them in Pink Fresh collections because the Hip Kit Club gave the design to Pink Fresh Studio because they're friends. So you will see a lot of them in the Pink Fresh and a um a lot in the hip kit club frequently so I just wanted to mention that and like I said they are fabric and they're beautifully made and a lot of people think that there's something on the back here that you can peel that is not the case don't try to peel that off because it's not gonna work and the packages come with large bows and smaller bows and the supplies that you're gonna need is some glue of your choice this is my fine line bottle and I use scotch tacky glue, but you of course could use whatever glue that you like. You will need a paintbrush or a pen or something with this shape. Whatever you have on hand is fine. You will need a pair of tweezers, the ones that hold things closed by themselves without you having to hold on to it. Like I have these tweezers that I use to scrapbook, but they don't stay closed unless I push them but these do. So you could use these tweezers or you could use um, a clip or you could probably even manage a paper clip, but that would be my last choice because I think it would smush it. All right, so let's make a small one first. And it comes with three pieces, the top bow, the bottom layer that's got like the fishtails at the end, and then the piece that goes in the middle to connect them together and make a pretty bow. So what I do is I take this top one first, and then this is where your pen or your paintbrush is gonna come in handy. So I always hold underneath with this finger, on top with this thumb, because I'm gonna pull on this and I don't want to ruin this. So I securely hold this, and then I take my paintbrush underneath and then hold onto this with my thumb and then roll it. And I'll usually do that two times. So it gives it a little curve like that. Turn it around, do the same thing twice. You could do it three, four times if you wanted to have more of a curve, whatever you wanted. And don't do it soft, don't do it super hard. Do it kind of medium, if that makes any sense, like that, okay? And then you're gonna get this curve in there. And then what I do is I take my ATG, I don't know if this is a list in the supplies. I forgot if I mentioned that or not. I have an ATG. If you use any other kind of tape, use that tape. It's fine. So then you're going to turn it inside up. Put your fingers here and put ATG or your tape. I put two right in the middle. And then, of course, the ATG roller is just a little bit bigger than the bow on the small ones. I just take my thumb and I tuck the tape back in. And then what you're going to want to do is take this and meet this in the middle onto the ATG. If you use glue here, you can. I find this easier. And then take the other side and meet that right in the middle and then put your hand on it and press it together a little bit. And now your bow is made and it gives you the dimension by using the paintbrush trick. Then I take my bow pattern side up 
and I will again hold on to it and put two or three little swipes of my adhesive ATG. Again, it's going to be thicker than the middle part here, so I just push it up. And then I take my bow and you're going to, the part that you put together in the middle here is going to go on the bottom and the straight across fabric with no line goes on top. And then you go ahead and put it in the middle. Like that. And now it's stuck together very, very well. It's not going to come apart and it looks like this. And then you get a third piece and you get the center piece that goes together. A lot of people will put this just on the bow part, this top part. I like to put it around the entire thing so there's not a bump in the middle, if that makes sense. And this is where your glue is going to come in because I, the only reason I use glue here is because if I swiped my ATG across this now, I would flatten this bow that I just put the dimension in. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the middle. Don't put a ton because it's going to squeeze out the sides. So just a little bit of glue right in the middle. And then this is when I take my regular tweezers. So I don't get glue on my hand because I don't like the feeling of glue on my hand. And you just kind of center that piece in the middle like that. So make sure it's right in the middle. You don't want it like this or this. You want to put it right in the middle. And of course, your glue is not going to be dry just yet, so you hold it there for a moment. Then you're going to turn it around, put your finger, whichever one you want, I use my middle finger, and put it under here like this so that doesn't move while your glue is drying. And then you're going to fold these in like that and make the crease here on the sides. See what I mean? because that way it won't flop back straight. And then, of course, it's not glued down yet. So sometimes the bottom part will pick up a piece of glue from what you just did. And then you put some glue in there. And then you're gonna come in and you're going to press that back together. So if any glue comes out the sides, I usually wipe it up. And this is where the tweezers that stay together on their own come into play. Just hold it like that. And then I take it and I put it to the side and give that a few moments to dry. And I continue scrapbooking. But in this case, we're going to make another one. We're going to use the large bow. And I'm going to use this on a layout I'm doing today. So I figured, well, let's do this video. So again, it's, you know, two, three, four swipes of this, depending on how much of a curve you would like in your bow, holding it in the middle. So we just be careful you don't pull it too hard. Just go like this. Kind of like, you know how you do the ribbons on a present to make them swirl? Something like that. So now this has turned into a curve. And again, here's my ATG. I'm going to put two swipes down here. Some of it comes off the side. Tuck it into the inside. Take this and meet the middle like that. And then turn it and go ahead again and line th this up with that one and meet in the middle. Press it with your fingers. See the dimension from twirl um you know, using your paintbrush. I don't know what word I want to use there. And then there, how pretty. Look at that. Nice, right? Okay, again, here's the bottom. You're going to do two or three swipes of the ATG or your adhesive. Make sure there's none sticking out. Put this flat. Take this, you know, just eyeball it. You know, this would be in the center of that. And you can turn this up so the tape underneath doesn't stick to this while you're trying to get it placed. You can go like that and then just see where the center is. And there, that's good. Now I'm gonna push this together with my fingers. Perfect. 
how pretty is that then you would take your middle and see where do I want this so I want the flower there especially if there's a pattern make sure it's like where you want it I think it looks better this way I don't know why but I do and then here's where you're going to put your little dollop of glue just in the middle and again not too much because you don't want it seeping out the sides and making a mess make sure it's in the middle and then you're gonna make sure it's straight to press down hold it for a moment give your glue just a couple seconds to dry because it is fabric so it's not going to be an instantaneous dry like it would be on scrapbook paper and then you're going to turn it around again i'm going to hold underneath and hold here so it doesn't move on me and then i'm going to fold this in just so i can have the lines on the side so it doesn't flip back out straight and again i'm going to do exactly the same thing here and then you're going to want to pull it back up Put your glue in go like this again and then put another glue for your next flip over hold on to it you can take your finger or your tweezers and grab the excess on the sides if you have any and I just usually you can you know, use a napkin I just usually put it on because I scrapbook and old clothes because I'm constantly covered in glue or glitter or something so I don't bother wearing nice things when I scrapbook and there's that now this is holding really good but sometimes it doesn't it needs a minute so this would be where you would take your tweezer and let this hold together for the glue to dry now how long did it take us to put that together one minute two minutes this is all good to go now all dry glues all good and then you can go ahead and use it on your scrapbook layout um, when I adhere these down to the paper, I do use glue because again, you need to put your adhesive here. And if I used my ATG or any kind of a tape runner, I would smush the dimension on the top. So I'm not going to, because I'm not sticking it to right now. So then I would come in with my glue and then put it on my layout. So that's how you put them together. They're really cute. They're very dimensional. I love them. I love putting them on my layouts. You can put them on a card, of course. Um, they're also fantastic if you have Christmas ones to put in your December documented. You can use it on your December documented. I put my bow from last year's December documented on the outside of my pages, and I think that looks super cute. I love that a lot. And that's held up for a year and it's still got pretty good dimension. It did smush a little. And then let me get that out the way. I used the bows on a couple of recent layouts. This is um, Hip Kit Club, same collection for 2021 Christmas. I did this for the Confessions of a Paper Attic Design Team. There's a process video for this, but I used the bow up in my title. Really cute. I do like to put bows in clusters like this because just putting one ra one randomly here, it doesn't work for me. I like to cluster them or and I also like to put them right on the bottom of photos because I think it looks cute like that inside of a cluster. You could do something like that. And I also used one recently on another Confessions of a Paper Attic cut file design team layout there's a process video for this too this bow right here is the tiny one and it's still got good dimension and i wanted to show you this because i like to put things with my bows you can hang things from your bows like i did here right here i put a bulb and it makes it look like it's hanging from the bow and then here i like to put things on top of the bow i put a button a flare button that my girlfriend karen from yes please yes please paper crafts button shop 
made me. It's a custom made button and it's got a picture of my cat on it. So you can put a bow, something on top of the bow, something underneath the bow. And then also the bows look super cute with some kind of an embellishment like a gem or a snowflake or something right in the middle here. An enamel dot you could put here. It looks really pretty with something in the middle too. So there's some ideas for you for these fabric bows. They're super cute. I absolutely love using them. I hope this was helpful to you if you were having troubles putting those together. And I thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Bye.